Welcome to the webinar. Um, this is about supporting students finish up their PhDs. Um, my name is Robin Henderson, and I'm the um, I'm a development consultant who works for a company called My Consultants Limited. We specialise in working in the higher education sector, and in particular, working with people who lead and manage research. Um, and within that, we spend a lot of time with PhD supervisors. And the essence of today's workshop is to look through and think about how you support students finish up, but not for that process of finishing up to be thought about as something that happens at the end of the PhD. I think there's a lot of building blocks that good supervisors put in place during the PhD process to ensure that finishing up is an integral part of the PhD rather than it being seen as a separate activity. I think different disciplines in these areas have different views as well. In social sciences and humanities, often the writing process is an integral part of the process, whereas in other areas, the writing process is a little bit more separate, and we'll pick up some of that as we go along. One of the things that I hear from PhD students when I'm working with them is um, about feedback, and it's one of the biggest grumbles, I think, from PhD students about how they get good quality feedback from the supervisor and the supervisors, and I think it's important to recognize the roles, again, um, of the first and second supervisors in that process. And then the final piece is that writing a thesis is a very challenging piece of work. It's different for a lot of students from what they got involved in research for, especially if you go to areas where perhaps the students are working alone in arts and humanities, or they're lab-based researchers and sciences who are now being tasked with a task which is a lot more difficult than they're used to. So how we support the students to be motivated and resilient, I think is an important thing to think about. So we're going to start off by having a look at some ideas about putting in building blocks. I'm just going to come back one slide before I do this. It's interesting that when I put together the webinar, I was looking for good quality references and advice for supervisors. And there's very little out there. So what I've actually done in this, I've, I've done some crowdsourcing amongst a group of experienced supervisors around about what their tips are to get some S ideas into the process. So starting point. Um, is always to have a look at PhD comics. And this is a student looking at writing their thesis up. And creating a plan sounds good. Setting a deadline all sounds like a good idea as well. But a lot of students, I think, at that point, the language here is freak out, get stressed, get worried, because perhaps they've not made a plan early enough in their PhD. The deadline they end up with is maybe unrealistic, and they've not thought about how they're going to manage that process through, so they haven't got the realistic timelines that they can achieve by. So I think it's just useful to think, even at a starting point, when do you start talking about finishing up? So if you speak to lots of people, there's lots of different views about what success looks like for PhDs. but at the end of the day, a successful PhD thesis is a completed PhD thesis which passes a viva. I think this is really, really important to remember. And as a supervisor, I think you need to remember that as much as the student needs to remember that. Um, I know that when I supervise master students, there's always a tendency that the thesis can always be better. The dissertation on my master's students can always be better. There's always more they can do. But at some point, there has to be a sense of completion in the process. So it's how do we work towards that completion through the PhD process? So when I spoke to experienced supervisors, a few things that came up in terms of helping their students finish. The first thing was that I think you need to be thinking through the whole PhD about putting in building blocks. In particular, around about writing skills. How do they put the words down on paper? How do they demonstrate and generate diagrams if you're in a figure-hungry discipline? And learning those skills, whether it's learning how to write a large document in LaTeX, or putting a large document together in Word, or putting specific diagrams together in a particular way. If they haven't got the skills for that when they get to the end point of their PhD, they're trying to learn skills alongside the complexity of writing up, and that gets in the way of the process. So I think it's just really important to think about how you put those skills in place. One of the things that my PhD supervisor always encouraged me to do was to write papers, 
both papers for publication, but also papers for my reference. And I think that process of continually writing through the PhD is really, really important to support your students' finish on time. I'd particularly encourage supervisors in science to encourage their students to write, and that the writing is an integral part of the process of doing their research. The second thing is around about having a clarity of question. At the end of the day, a thesis is round about having a question which is answered through an argument. And within the process of writing a PhD, having a really high quality question makes a massive difference to the quality of the end product. So supporting your student, think about questions throughout the PhD process, think about the concept of thesis can be very, very helpful. The next thing is for the student to have a clear purpose. That might be a project-based purpose or a career-based purpose. And I think in here there is that sense of why am I doing a PhD, understanding that from the student, helping the student vocalize, discuss that, so that when you get to the challenging stages of a PhD, when the student's motivation is perhaps lacking, or they're struggling with their resilience, that you can go back to remind them about that purpose, and that they feel connected to that purpose of the work they're doing. Another thing that lots of supervisors told me is that it's really important to support your students understand what a good, high-quality thesis is. One of the pieces of advice I would always give a student is to go and read some PhD thesis at the start of their PhD process. And I think just trying to encourage your students to engage with that process throughout the PhD, so it's not what makes a high quality paper, it's what makes a high quality thesis which needs to be examined. And for in each discipline area, for everybody to be clear about what that looks like, so that the student, when they start writing, knows the level and quality of the writing that's required. And then the other thing I think is important is that you and the student have worked throughout the PhD to work out a process for getting and working with feedback. The more feedback the student can get during the PhD process, the better the PhD will be. So think about how you put those building blocks in during the PhD process, all the way through, writing all the way through, discussion about question all the way through, discussion about purpose, project and career, discussion about feedback and how it's working, and that discussion about what does the quality of the work look like. Put those in place, and when you get to the finishing stages, you're more likely to have a successful conclusion. In terms of when you get to the completion phase, the advice that came very, very strongly through from supervisors was the first thing that a supervisor needs to do is give the student permission to stop researching. And there's a value judgment in there from the supervisor about when the student has done enough research to complete. My mentor when I was an academic um, told me that there was three rules to PhD supervision. One of them was that the PhD supervisor was involved in the project. The second one was papers first, thesis second. And the third one was supervisor tells the student when to stop. And I think it's really important that the supervisor gives an indication to the student when they've done enough research so that they can stop and they can be confident that they've done enough to pass their PhD. There will always be more to do, so that indication of the supervisor is very important. The second thing in terms of creating focus on the project is to support them build a plan. And that plan should include career discussions of what they need to do before they finish. I think in there, there's a sense of, if I'm doing a PhD, I'm doing it for a reason. If I want to achieve what I want to achieve at the end of the PhD, what do I need to do by the time I finish? And that might be about learning new skills, being exposed to different industries, doing internships. And to think about the project, not as just the thesis, but as the student achieving what they need to achieve for their career from the project. So I think they need to have a plan, probably from three years out, but definitely from a year out of what they need to do to finish. And within that, I'd suggest that they set a firm deadline. I meet lots of students who go, I'm going to finish by roughly the 24th of 
well, I'm going to finish sometime in March. And I'd really encourage them to go, actually, what day in March is it? Is it the 24th of March? What time is it on the 24th of March? But when the deadlines are vague, then they will always move. Whereas definite deadlines can make a massive difference. I know that for myself, um, Aberdeen University weren't going to pay me as a postdoc unless I'd submitted my thesis. So I had a definite view of when I needed to finish by it. And that was really, really helpful in terms of creating that firm deadline. The third thing, I think, is that you want to remind your students to capture but not action new ideas they have. So it comes back to number one, letting the student know when they've done enough research to complete. So it's about them capturing new ideas, but saving those up for future projects. There will always be new projects for them to do in the future. Point number four that people came out with was the idea about not distracting them from the job of completion, unless there's a good point to see later on. Um, the reason for this is that it's very tempting to get your students to take on roles within the school department, within your research group, perhaps supervising master students or supporting new PhD students. And that might be part of their development, which is why I'm referencing point six about this idea about post PhD. But I think you need to be making sure that they're focused in what they're doing over and above their research work. So you should be consciously thinking, I'm not going to ask them to do more because that's going to distract them from writing the thesis. So I think just keeping a focus on that and creating the space for the student to really complete is very important. The fifth thing in terms of focus on the project is round about the quality of the thesis. Um, there's a book by Jackson and Tinkler, um, which does research on, which did research on the examination process. And one of the interesting things about which came out of that research was how much the VIVA is perceived as a confirmation process rather than a driving decision-making process. And I think it's really important to get the student to focus on producing a really high quality thesis because that's the most likely thing that will support them in passing their VIVA. So making sure that's in place is very important. And the final piece about the project, which I alluded to earlier, is that the project is not just about the PhD thesis, but the wider experience of the students. So what do they need to do to support them move forward to a postdoctoral position or to move out into industry or the third sector? That's all part of the project which needs to be addressed. So I encourage you to think about how you help your students focus. The next thing is about how you provide feedback. There is a tendency among some students, and certainly some of the students I've supervised, that they don't want to let me see as a supervisor things that aren't very good things that aren't polished, things they don't think are finished. I think it's really, really important to get the students to give you rough drafts, outlines of arguments, to ensure that their time is well spent. Where I give them feedback on the ideas and the structure of the argument, not on the quality of the writing they give. So it's separating the idea phase in terms of how they structure their work from the writing phase. That means that your students, when they sit down to write, have had feedback and they know what, how to structure their arguments and then they can write to that structure rather than going away, writing a structure and then perhaps coming back to discover that what they've written at a structural level is not very good. And even though it's beautiful, it all needs rewritten. So I think get that rough draft process in place very keenly. The second thing, is about timely, and you hear a lot of complaints from PhD students about how long the supervisor takes to give them feedback. Um, the process that I use with my students and a few other people were suggesting is this idea of planning in time at deadlines. So get your student to set deadlines, you plan in time into your diary around those deadlines, and then give them quick feedback on their work. That will motivate your students because then they have see a sense of progression, they can see if they're getting better, they can see their progress, and then that will support the motivation. It's almost that giving frequent, shorter feedback is better than large pieces of long feedback. So for example, um, I know that when I was supervising PhD students, a student might send me a whole chapter, and a chapter took me a long time to get through as a supervisor, whereas if they were giving me half a chapter or the first 10 pages of a chapter, I could read that within a few hours, maybe a couple of days of actual time to give them that feedback piece. 
there will be a time that you need to give feedback on the larger pieces, but those shorter pieces can be really helpful in terms of keeping the momentum going in the project. In giving them feedback, it's really important to let them know what's good as well as what needs modified. I see a lot of students who get feedback who don't know what's good in their work. And that stops them reproducing the good elements. So if there are specific things that the student is doing well within their work, make sure you tell them what those things are. So that gives them a recipe for reproducing in terms of how they write the sections that they're struggling with. This is also important in terms of their sense of motivation. There's motivation theory. Um, which is discussed by somebody called Dan Pink in a book called Drive, where he highlights mastery, the, the sense of getting better and improving as a really important part of motivating knowledge workers. And that sense of mastery, I think, is really important for your students to create that. The next thing I'd say to people is that when writing is poor, it's easier to overwhelm with feedback. You can give people too much, too much feedback so that they end up at the point where they don't know how to action the feedback that they receive. So if you've got somebody whose writing is poor, it might be that you need to give them three, four, five actions to put on place for the whole of the section that you're giving them feedback on to, for them to modify those things before moving into the next phase of giving feedback. So you see feedback as an iterative process rather than a once-off process. I think that's really important for students who are struggling with the writing process in particular, because if you give them too much feedback, you can completely overwhelm them with the um, feedback and completely demotivate them by removing that sense of mastery from them. And the other piece I mentioned this earlier is that you as a supervisor need to remember that good enough is good enough. It's tempting to tell your student that, but for you to forget that when it's the feedback. It's not a paper for the highest impact four-star journal in your field. It's a PhD thesis, and it needs to be good enough to pass the examination. So in giving the feedback, make sure you're aware of the standards that are required, as well as your students are aware of those standards. The final thing I think you need to be very conscious of as a supervisor is around about how you support their resilience. Um, there's lots written about resilience, and resilience is actually quite a hot topic in higher education. There was a report from Unite, the housing company, recently about supporting student um, resilience. And what I've done here is I've borrowed a model from Vanderbilt University. The link is on the resource slides in a little bit, and it just talks about what do you need to do to support your student in terms of their resilience. Things like having a positive attitude, being able to accept help and have an attitude where they can learn and they haven't got it right yet. There's work from a lady called Carol Dweck, who's an educational psychologist in the US, who talks about we haven't got this section right yet, rather than this section is not good enough. And even the way you use the language can create optimism in your students to support their attitude towards improvement. There's things at a lifestyle level, so encouraging your students to go and do activity, to eat and sleep well, actually is an important part of them supporting their resilience. So if you've got a student where that's clearly not happening, then I think it's useful to have that conversation around about, you know, actually, you've stopped doing this sport, or I noticed that you're in here very, very long hours. Those things are actually important to flag with the student, because the f finishing up process is not usually a sprint. It's a long distance race, and the resilience is the thing that keeps the person going through that long different race. And then the final piece is around about their skill sets. Within that, there's their sense of, I, the word emotional intelligence is used heavily in the resilience world. But what that means within the context of the PhD setting is the sense that just because I haven't done this well yet doesn't mean I can't do it that you've given me feedback, therefore it's not that I'm bad, it's just I haven't got there yet. And it's this sense of optimism within that emotional intelligence, but also their ability to communicate their issues with you. And if you come back to what you can do as a supervisor to support your students' resilience, I think one of the biggest things you can do is to check in with them about how they're managing their stress, how they're managing their 
sense of well-being through the write-up process by asking them specific questions and then creating a communication process with your student which allows them to express how they're doing. Um, more and more there's evidence that PhD students really struggle with stress and in particular through the write-up process. So think about the resilience, have a read a little bit more about the resilience can be really helpful for supporting your students keep that momentum going through the process. So before we finish off and take some questions, just to point out that there's lots of resources out there. Majority of the resources are written from a perspective of students giving advice to students or supervisors giving advice to students. There's not very much about supervisors giving advice to supervisors. But I would suggest that if you read some of the articles about suggestions that academics give to PhD supervise students, you will find useful advice in there in terms of what you might look for in terms of supporting your student. The Writing for Research blog and Thesis Whisperer blog I'm sure many of you will have come across before. Excellent resources to support your students write. I would particularly recommend the Thesis Whisperer and actually the book that came out of the Thesis Whisperer blog is excellent. And I've put a link in there to the Resilience Toolkit from Vanderbilt University. So at that point I'm going to close off with a quick summary um, which says you support students you start supporting your students to finish from the start of the PhD process. If you put building blocks in all the way through the process, your students will be more successful. Think about all the things they need at the end and start getting them to do those things at the start. Keep them focused, support them making good decisions for what they want to do and what they want to be involved in, which will strategically help them on their project of a PhD their project of a PhD and what they would like in terms of career options. Support their motivation and resilience through your interactions with them. Frequent, shorter interactions, high quality feedback, quickly delivered, not overwhelming, telling them what they're doing well as well as where they need to improve can really help their motivation and resilience. And as a final word, just keep coming back to that. Remember, good enough is good enough. You need to have that as a mantra as well as your students having that as a mantra. So I'm going to finish there and hand over to Alison, who's going to see what questions have been raised through the process. Thanks so much, Robin. And apologies to everyone for the confusion at the beginning. I actually, I had my, uh, I think Robin had his mic on, but I had my sound turned off. So apologies about that. Uh, the other thing we didn't mention at the beginning was we've actually, uh, I think you may see on your screen, we've recorded this webinar. Um, if any of you have, I think your chat, uh, the chat in the um, chat box will have also been recorded. So if you've got any issues with anything uh, being recorded and put on our website, then maybe drop me a line uh, afterwards and we'll see what we can do. Um, but uh, hopefully, I think there was some there was some really good, uh, not so many questions for you, Robin, but some really good points being made and some uh, points in support of being of what you of what you were saying. Um, Kendi made the point that the um, with good feedback, continuing feedback, can make it easier. For a research student to judge when there is that when they've collected enough data, when the research has been done, and I would I would echo that and say that I think um, that can strengthen the student's decision making throughout on, on, on a number of fronts. Um, I wanted to also just flag up that we have some additional resources around uh, skills and strategies uh, for managing student transitions, and there is specifically some stuff on resilience, so that can be found on the enhancement themes website as well. And um, did anybody else have any actual questions that they wanted to put to Robin? Um, this is Alison here. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, from QMU. Um, I think it's a, your point about feedback is a really salutary one around not overwhelming weaker writers. And um, so I will definitely um, take that away with me. But I suppose, to be really honest, one of the challenges in, in taking that on board properly is the amount of extra investment that requires. So if you're reading something through, you're going to be noting um, a lot of issues with writing, perhaps. Um, so if you're, if you're then going to give people feedback that only um, limits it to a few key points, you've got to go through all the way through again and um, filter and edit and you know select what are the important points. So I mean, I realize that that, that 
is the ideal thing to do, but if you've got any tips on how to be most efficient about that without having to go through everything twice, I would be really grateful. Um, so I'll give an example. I was reading an MSc dissertation yesterday, um, and we're at feedback stage one on the overall document. Um, I think I read through the document in about 15 minutes, which isn't very much time for an MSc, but I would do a quick scan read first. And out that quick scan read came three salient points for the student to work on. One was about his referencing, one was about how he used his data, and the other piece was about the way that he structured the flow in his sections. I can give him those three bits of feedback back very quickly, and without very much investment on my time as a supervisor. And then, once I've got that piece in place, then when he comes back with the next phase, then I will spend more time reading. But it's, I think it's about not going through everything in detail every single time, but about supporting that iterative process. I do appreciate that as a supervisor, that's a different, that there is an investment in time. But I remember I had a PhD student who, um, his first draft of his first section of his thesis had, he was an overseas student, his English wasn't great, and he'd forgotten to use the definite article. And there was not one definite article in the whole of the first 10 pages. And as somebody trying to read that, it was driving me mad and to do the detailed feedback. So I put in place a system where he went away and he fixed that. And then as a supervisor, I was able to more quickly pull out the other elements. Thanks, Robin. We've got a question from Debbie, uh, playing devil's advocate. Could it possibly be construed as, dem as demotivating to tell your student that good enough is good enough? It could be interpreted as a mediocre thesis is, su is sufficient rather than striving for excellence. I can see the argument there. Um, I always tell um, people I'm working with about my experience. And I did my PhD. I passed with minor corrections. Um, I then became an academic. And then one of my PhD students started working on something similar to my work. And um, he proved, actually, that one of my chapters was wrong. And I didn't think at the time that my work was mediocre. But by the time my student proved that what I was doing was wrong, is that sense that the, the topic will always move on. And so there's that sense that good enough is good enough in terms of getting the PhD, it's a qualification. And so I think what's more important, and I'm, I come from an engineering background, would be that I'd be really encouraging my students to go, the papers I write have to be amazing, but my thesis has to be good enough. Because at the end of the day, um, realistically, not many people are going to read my thesis, but people are going to read my paper. So that's the important piece. And so I do appreciate that in other areas. In humanities, the thesis is much more of an important thing in terms of that longer term career piece. But in some areas, I think it's just that sense of I've done enough. And you will, con you know, if you think about the process, I've met people who have spent seven years writing a PhD. At the end of the day, they still got a PhD. I did mine in two years and 364 days. I still got a PhD. And I think it's just finding that balance. For the perfectionist out there, I think that's a particularly important um, piece because the perfectionist will often struggle to let go. And at some point, I think you need to be willing to go, actually, I think we're there um, for the perfectionist student. For the student who's a little bit more slapdash, you might need to do things slightly differently. Okay, I think given I think we're running to about ten past two now, so I think we will um, draw the webinar to a close. There's still notice that there's still some com uh, some uh, conversation ongoing in the in the box, uh, but all of this will be captured and we'll we'll get the video up um, as soon as we can. But I think I'd like to thank Robin again for what I think was a very engaging and uh, and valuable uh, presentation, and I'd like to thank you all for attending and participating in the in the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, everybody. Um, just to say, um, my email address is on the front of the slides, um, and my Twitter feed's there. I'm really happy to um, engage with people post-webinar if you've got any other questions or are looking for other resources. Um, I am going on holiday tomorrow, but I will get back to you quickly if you do send me an email after that. Nice to meet you all.